Hello folks and welcome to the Virtual Cafe. I'm your host, Shekula Ola Salami. Um, what can I get you today? Well, uh, my name is Winona Marie. I'm from the office of End I Thought Divorce Was Bad with Other Life Lessons. I also represent the End I Thought Ladies. And Sagola, today you can get me an upside down double mochiato with soy milk. What? Extra heavy on the serve. What? what? I've not heard of that type of drink before. Say that again, please. Uh, upside down white chocolate mochiato with heavy on the serve and soy milk. Upside down. Okay, you know what? I'm feeling like a donkey right now. What's an upside down? <laughs> well, normally when you go to Starbucks, they put all your syrup in coffee and cream at the bottom, and then they put the coffee in. So you want it upside down, so all of that's on the top. Ah, interesting. It's kind of like when you go to a, um, a bar and you want to order some bar food, and then it was like, oh, can you can I get a deconstructed uh, burger? And you think, what? How do you deconstruct a burger? But okay, that's fine. I will put that to the little human to try and get this uh, upside down. What did you call it again? White chocolate macchiato. Okay. Well, I'm gonna say that I'm not a very, I'm not very posh. I, I don't go to Starbucks. I haven't come across that one before. But we learn every day. So, little human, an upside down macchiato with. I wouldn't even try to pronounce the rest of it. <clears throat> what would you <laughs> okay. like? What would you like with your drink? Oh, I think I'm going to go with a uh, sprout bread toasted thing. Okay, right. So, little human, we've got a very, very fussy Sex in the City type of uh, guest today. So, we'll just, <laughs> we'll just get her tea and a croissant, okay? Yeah, so that's what we'll get her. That right? great. <laughs> so, who's next, please? Uh, hi, my name is Ken Bader. I'm the uh, owner and founder of Bader Training and Consulting. Uh, we help businesses create environments where employees actually want to come to work and customers want to keep coming back. And, and that's a, a focus of my latest book, which is the formula for business success equals B plus C plus S. And as much as I'd probably like to have a screwdriver since it's morning here, I think I'll just stick with, with a regular coffee. How's that? Yes, please. And is a <laughs> screwdriver a drink? <laughs> yes, yes. That is orange juice and vodka, which is ah. good for any time of the day, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I think we'll end up in daily. Sorry? Ken, can I just join you with that? Let's make it a mimosa so it'll seem nice. You know, not not a not a problem. You know, you put orange juice with with anything, and and you can you can drink it any time, whether it be three in the morning or three in the afternoon. Like like we say here, it's five o'clock somewhere, right? True, true. Yep. True. And it's five o'clock in England where she is. There yep. you go. <laughs> <laughs> and it's a nice sunny day as well, because I'm looking in my backyard and I'm thinking, what? I should be out there right now, sun, you know, working on my tan. Um, because, you know, I don't know if you know this, but apparently in, in the UK, right, we are sun worshippers. Like, we keep studying the sun and we keep studying the sun. It's like, oh, you dear sun, please come out. We are your worshippers and, and in need of you, come out, come out. So, it was you know. The weirdest, oh, it was the weirdest thing. I used to date this guy in Leeds, and that's all he ever talked about. He's like, the sun's supposed to be out in three weeks. And I'm like, yeah, the sun's out every day here. What are you talking about? <laughs> Well, the the iron the irony here. I'm I'm sitting here in sunny Long Beach, California, and it isn't that sunny. It's actually kind of rainy and cloudy, so I'm jealous. Oh, but then considering that we only get like sunshine maybe one month out of a year, please, I'm not even feeling any sympathy for you whatsoever. <laughs> hey, hey, this is this is one of our five days without sun. I want a little empathy. <laughs> hey, I, you've got it on my end. I'm not gonna lie. It's been raining here and gray, and I've been all I've been calling is my friends in London and then my friends in um, Seattle, and I'm like, take your weather back, because we don't like it. <laughs> I know, but I'm so like, you know, like when the sun comes out and it just makes you feel really, really good, and it's like you're like, wah, 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 I wanna dance now. I wanna dance now, cause the sun is out. The sun is out. <laughs> Oh, no, I understand. I definitely get it. <laughs> right. Oh, 
before before we can continue, if you give me two seconds, if you just socialize, I will get the little human to get your drinks together and your food. And I've got freshly baked bread in the oven that I'm just going to turn off the oven. You know, it's nice. You know, I've used my special ingredients in making this bread. And, you know, I try to be healthy. And so I've got courgette, which you guys like to call zucchini. So let me go take out the bread from the oven, you know, because I can smell that waft coming through. And I'm like, what? You know what? Sometimes you just think, you know what? I don't mind the extra weight weight around my waist because the food just makes it all the world worth ah, all the more worthwhile. So give me a second, you guys. Socialize, socialize. <laughs> we will. Well, well, no, no. Where are you coming from? I'm from Annapolis, Maryland. So over there with the Naval Academy, 30 minutes close. What? 30 minutes south of Baltimore and 30 minutes east of Washington. I know exactly where it is. I've had the pleasure to be in Annapolis a number of years ago, and ironically, I just did a conference in Washington, D.C. about three months ago. So congratulations. That's a beautiful area. It is. It's really nice. I'm like, to me, it's, I've never been to San Francisco. If everyone tells me it's like a smaller San Francisco, except our weather's not as good, but whatever. I, I love the town. It's got everything you need in it um, without going to D.C. or Baltimore. So. I will definitely, I, I will definitely give you that. Having been to both Annapolis and San Francisco, I'll say Annapolis is a little bit easier to get around and not as hilly. Um, <laughs> well, I'm a, I'm originally from Chicago, Illinois. Uh, I lived there, grew up there, lived there for almost 40 years, and I'm only 25, so figure that out. But uh, a few years ago, I moved to Southern California um, after I got remarried. So I live in uh, Long Beach, and my office is in Orange, which is actually not too far away from the infamous Disneyland. Oh, my goodness. So, like, I'm going out to L.A. in a couple of weeks, and I was thinking about, like, going to Disney World. Is it <clears throat> that far? Is it far away? Um, Dis Disney, if you're in downtown L.A., Disneyland and good traffic is probably, I'd say, about a half an hour. Um, and bad traffic, uh, maybe half a day. <laughs> oh, no. No, yeah. because we had to, like, shoot television, like, for a week. So, like, I was trying to, like, on the day, on the, the hours that we had off, I was like, I'm going to run over to Disney and come right back. Hmm. Yeah, depending on where you're... not making it to either. Well, depending on where you're you, you're going to be in Los Angeles County, Universal Studios might be a little bit closer to you. But uh, but if you're going to be out here for a while, I will uh, invite you to buy me a couple of screwdrivers. <laughs> <laughs> I nice. <love> it. <laughs> <laughs> well, I do like it when the people connect, you know, and become the you know pen pals and virtual friends. Um, but I'm back now. My bread looks fantastic. <clears throat> Sorry, my, my my throat is a bit on the raspy side. Anywho, uh, okay. So normally, when I have lovely guests come on the show or to the virtual cafe, you know, they, I find that I turn to learn um, something new every day. And you know, we've come, we've covered so many different things that I feel quite knowledgeable now you know we've learned about short-term sales strategies we've learned about you know things authors can do outside of you know selling their books you know using the book as an extra way to um, earn an income we've learned about book reviews uh, we've talked about building a street team you know there have been so much um, but then one thing we haven't talked about is I mean what is your opinion about networking I mean Okay, so I think first of all, what is networking? I mean, I think it might be obvious, but it might not be so obvious. Oh, well, I can't even speak properly anymore. Like, so what is networking, and <laughs> is that important or is that not important? Um, this is Walona, and I believe networking is extremely important. Uh, you know, when someone starts a business, the first thing they say is, "You need to go out there and network," and that's why they have lunches and conferences just for networking. And if I had to give a definition to networking, I would say it'd be meeting people, strategic people, to hmm. for your own business. And um, hopefully you guys will have uh, a relationship that both of you benefit. Well, you can get them a step further and they can get you a step further. If not, they can get you in contact with someone who can. Mm. Interesting. But I'm sure Ken is better at this because he actually has the business. Yes, that's true. Come, 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 come. Ken, 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 Ken tell us, tell us, tell us, tell us, tell us. 
Ken, Ken's rarely better at anything, but we'll give this a shot. Uh, <laughs> Uh, yeah, I would I would say that that networking is collaborating with a purpose. Um, it, it it is extremely important in in a lot of my work in strategic planning and in, in marketing planning. Yeah, we we talk about networking with a purpose and, and using it as a specific tactic. In fact, uh, um, I was mentioning right before the program one of one of my very good friends and colleagues is is in the United Kingdom, uh, Johnny Spence, and he's a, a networking expert. And in a nutshell, he talks about being very very intentional and specific about where you network. You know, here in the United States, you literally literally I could spend five days a week, maybe six days a week, pra practically every waking hour in some type of chamber of commerce, networking meeting, meetup, um, things of that nature, but uh, it, it would be a it, it would be a detriment to my business if I didn't be very selective and pick and choose which networking meetings that I go to that apply to to my particular business. If that makes sense. Mm, no, that is quite that is that is quite that is quite true. And then you mentioned something though. Um, you know, chamber of commerce. Um, I mean, I have been to a couple of chamber of commerces. You know, where it was like you know the business ah, the business is in the local area. Um, you know, they sort of come together to introduce themselves to each other and say, you know, this is what I do. But then as an author, how does going to a local chamber of commerce, how is that beneficial? And would that be beneficial only to fiction or um, to non-fiction authors? Or would fiction authors also benefit from going to, a, you know, to a meeting at a local chamber of commerce? <clears throat> Well, I'll chime in on that real quick because I've been a member of a couple of ch chambers. Um, as as I always tell my clients, which they they completely love, um, it depends. <laughs> um, it really depends on the chamber of commerce. For instance, there are, there are two that are very local to me here. One that I belonged to for a few years that I eventually dropped out because there wasn't a lot of collaboration. There wasn't a lot of focus to it. Um, so, for instance, they would have mixers and there would be, say, 25 people there and 23 of them would be selling investments or insurance. Now, that's, that's all fine and good. We need insurance salespeople and investment experts, but that's not really going to help my business or me as an author particularly um, mm. unless I want to be called the next day by 23 insurance folks and investment <laughs> folks. Um, but then there's, there's another chamber here, which is a much smaller chamber and very, very close-knit, which is, is really what you want, especially as an author mm. because you get to know people. And, and they truly want to work together. So from, from that standpoint, I found the, the smaller chambers or the smaller, closer-knit groups to be much more valuable where they, they actually, one, uh, want to hear about your book. Two, you understand right away whether the book is going to resonate with them or not. And, and, and three, you know, there's, there's an opportunity for true collaboration, whatever that means. Obviously, we're, we're all looking for sales of either our books or our services. But if collaboration can be a strategic partnership, you're looking for that too. Um, to close on that comment, you mentioned fiction or nonfiction. Um, again, it depends on the chamber. I think if you're, you're promoting a fiction book, um, if it's a closer knit type of group, I think that that you're going to to have a little bit more opportunity to promote it. Um, you know, even if it's not from a, a business to business standpoint, you know, all these folks are just people. They they all have kids. They all have families for, for the most part. So if you have a fiction book that really resonates with some people. Um, you might not only be able to sell some books, but you also may be able to to get some type of a reading um, or something along those lines that could help you promote it. Hmm. I was going to say that this is Winona, and I was going to say the same thing as Kim. Uh, when you are a fiction author, what you want more importantly is sales, and then you also want to be able to meet people and get feedback. So as long as there are people in the room and you have a connection with them and you've talked to them, there's a possibility that you know your book will come up in a conversation. And the nicer you are, the more likely they are to go check out your website right. and check out the fact that you know you have a book out there because you've made a connection with a person. Now that connection can get you like their friends, they'll might chat about the book if it's a good book. But the important part with the Chamber of Commerce thing is just to meet people. 
Now, for networking for uh, fiction people, I would probably not go to the Chamber of Commerce Merce, as quickly as I would probably go to like the Maryland Writing Association or open work or open a uh, mic th- sort of thing for uh, ah. fiction. Hmm. Mm-hmm. But make sure so- you have a good performance piece. <laughs> what would you class as a good performance piece? I don't. I don't want to harp on a lot of people, but a lot of people get up there and they read the thing. They read their uh, part of their fiction, and first of all, the part that they read wasn't that interesting, and then they read it kind of dryly. Remember that when you're getting up there, you're trying to sell your words. You need your words to come alive so that the people now join you in the story. Once they're yeah. in the story and you're only giving them like three, four paragraphs of it, they need to know what happens next. So pick the most interesting part and imagine that you are playing, you are auditioning for a movie to be the star role in your own book and then yeah. play it out like that. Mm, 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 mm. But I definitely 100%, you know, now it, you've said it, it's kind of like the the open mic bit, because sometimes when you think about open mic, or when I think about open mic, the first thing that comes to my mind is poetry. Mm -hmm. Very true, most people do. But, you know, just sort of, now that you've said it, it's like, duh, yeah, actually it can be, you know, open mic um, as well. So, okay, but because from that point of view, though, it's, it's more like a show that you're attending as opposed to being a networking event. So, what do you think? I think once you get off that stage, you now have a room full of people who are semi-interested in what you say. So from then on, you get to talk to them, network, see what they're doing. They're already in the same section as you. Like, they're already still, like, artsy sort of people. So they know somebody or they are doing something that that you could join in as a project or you could get the word out there. A lot of them, they have their own podcasts. They have their own television shows. Some of them have documentaries. So all of you are in the art world. So this way you can connect to, to the people who are in the art world. Uh, for instance, last Monday, last Tuesday night, I went to an open mic and I read a part of the fiction, part of a short story in the book. And mm. I actually met a movie producer. So now I have a documentary that starts shooting in a couple of months. Congratulations. Right. He was a movie producer, but I knew the owner of WP Television, so I connected him with a job. And then she knew an LA TV producer. And so I ended up on an LA television show and I'm getting I'm being considered as a host of my tele, of a television show for myself because I went to an open mic and read a part of a, a paragraph of fiction. So networking at open mics is important. You're you're already in the same level. You're already in the same genre. Woo! Congratulations again, Missy. Congratulations. It's like, okay. I'm just like, whoa! <laughs> so okay. of, course, of course, please, people, check me out when I actually have this happen. <laughs> <laughs> and you heard about her first on the Shagulala Salami Show, okay? <laughs> you heard about her first. Oh, wow, congrats. Okay, so you see now, last week we had, um, you know, an Amazon best-selling author, uh, what was his name again, David Chatfield, come on the show, um, and what he had said was that, you know, within three weeks of his book coming out, he had sold over 10,000 copies, which I thought was amazing, and, you know, on last week's episode, you know, we were talking about, you know, short-term sales strategies and what authors can do to um, improve sales of their book, and what he said was the most defining thing that any author can do is word of mouth. Right, and now having you here, you've just gone to reinforce, you know, reinforce it. So most of the time, a lot of authors and myself included, you know, we spend time online, you know, doing a lot of things, but then we forget about that one-to-one human connection. I think that's important because that's the one that lasts the longest in people's minds and hearts. You got to keep tweeting every day to remind them that you're there. But if yeah. you can meet someone, they're gonna remember you for a couple of weeks, a couple of months, maybe even a year. Yes, no, definitely, because I think I was reading something that people might forget what you say to them, but they will remember how you, f- you made them feel. Mm-hmm. So if someone goes to your open mic you know, um, show, for instance, they might actually forget the words that you say, because I think I was reading somewhere that you know, sometimes when you're telling people, and I'm sure you've already all forgotten the first thing that I said, and I've even forgotten the first thing that I said when we start, you know, you all came on the show, um, but so people would forget the words that you say, 
but then they would remember the things that you say. So for instance, now, the thing that I remember from Kenneth is talking about a screwdriver, and I didn't even know what a <laughs> screwdriver was, but, you know, it's like, I will remember him because, you know, he, he made me laugh from, you know, from that point of view. So people will remember how you make them feel, so that when you're then connecting with them, you know, online, it's kind of like, oh, yes, I remember this, you know, this lady or this gentleman, and, you know, we talked about a screwdriver, which I was wondering how a regular screwdriver, what had, that had to do with a, you know, with a virtual cafe, but hey. Um, <laughs> So, yes, actually, it does. It's sort of, you know, when you start having all these, you know, different people give their different opinion, it makes everything just click into place. And you're thinking, what? Hmm. Okay. Thank you. So, networking, you know, so you have to be strategic. So, if I get what you said, you know, you have to be strategic in your um, networking events. You know, you got, it's a collab collaborative um, efforts, you need to be selective because if you go through everyone, they're all not necessarily going to be useful to you. But you have to go to one where you can collaborate with other authors or with other people there, either on a B2B business to business or business to, uh, customer. Um, and even if the, you know they're not going to be useful to you as a business, but as individuals, if your book was fiction, there's the possibility that if your book is a quality book, they might just check it out just for the, because they've connected with you, which is where the whole word of mouth, you know, comes in. Um, and like you said, uh, we'll learn it, that, you know, if you then go to, um, instead of like your chamber of commerce, or, you know, if you go to an open mic event, you have all these people there who are already, you know, interested in sort of the same thing as you. So it's then, you know, you know, going there to tell them a bit more, you know, have a conversation with them. Um, okay, perfect. I think that sort of summarizes it, or did I miss anything? Sounds great. No, I think you did it well. Perfect. Uh, da, 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 da. So, um, well, you guys are in America. I'm in the UK, so I can't ask you to recommend, uh, you know, networking events. So I'll just say, if you... Chamber of Commerce, I think it's Chamber of Commerce. It doesn't matter which part of the world you're in. So if you write nonfiction, go and register with your local Chamber of Commerce. So check them out, you know. Check out for local networking events, you know, to see. And if possible, we might even create a, uh, a virtual networking event. What do you guys think? I think, that's, no, I think that's an excellent idea. Especially if Ken is there. He has all the business connections. <laughs> yes, yes, can, you know, yes, 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 yes. Okay, so when we when we, we go offline and we close the shop, the cafe for today, we can then sort of take you forward and say, okay, let's create, and then you can invite all the people, and then, you know, you will know her as well, all your movie, you know, contacts and all the lovely people, you know, you can invite them over, and then all my previous guests, you know, all the people who have come to my virtual cafe, I can invite them on and say, okay, we're going to have a virtual networking event to just talk about books and businesses and see how we can improve. How does that sound? Perfect. Sounds good. Sounds perfect. Good. Perfect, perfect, perfect. Now, have you guys read any indie books in the last year that you like? You know, because I just think, you know, we talk about books all the time and, you know, to just help other authors out, you know, let's just say what we've liked and maybe hopefully somebody listening to in on the virtual cafe would go and check them out. So, Kenneth, what, virtue, what indie book have you read in the last year that you've liked? You know, the, the last indie book that I read, uh, which I believe was uh, co-written by uh, one of your guests, former guests, is uh, Beyond Good Manners, How to Raise a Sophisticated Child by uh, Tara Woods Turner and, uh, and Blake Turner. Um, I thought that was an excellent book, and ironically, I don't even have children. <laughs> uh, but, but yeah, in, in particular, you know, one of one of the things that I teach and frankly get on my little pulpit uh, for out here is the 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 real need to to mentor millennials and and what we call Gen Z and beyond and and truly teach them the the skills to succeed and I think that we've we've kind of fallen short a little bit about with that in the U.S. sometimes and we we need to to teach the youth in order to to be our, our next leaders and I, I thought that 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 particular book how to raise a sophisticated child was 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 excellent in terms of of not being um, you know too what I would call highfalutin it was it was just very good in terms of tips and and, and how to 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 really connect with your child in a positive way. 
Oh, perfect, perfect. Thank you for that. I'm sure if um, if Tara's listening to this now, she would be screaming. She's like, oh, I got married because she's been on the show twice already, and I think she's going to come <laughs> on a third time. You know what? I actually feel good that people want to come back on the virtual cafe because this is well known as second time. So, Ken, you know, you've got to then come yeah. back now at some point to, you know, just make me feel good that people like the show enough <laughs> to want to come back. Um, Not a problem. We'll put it on the calendar. So, Gola, can I... Sorry? So, Gola, can I be forward enough to ask for a number three? Is this, oh, I don't mind at all. See, I, I absolutely love it when people want to come back, you know, because it just makes me feel like, you know, I'm serving good drinks in my virtual cafe. I might not serve screwdrivers, but, you know, my virtual drinks are nice. Yes. <laughs> so don't worry. After the show, you've got my calendar. Please feel free to book a poor time to come. I would be happy to have you again. Awesome. Yes, um, and, if, and the same thing with you, Kenneth. You've got my calendar, so please do feel free to book as well. I would love to have you again on the show. It's like, I've just got this big size. Like, today it's like I, I'm like the cat that's got the cream. It's like it's a nice sunny day. It's a heat wave in London. Um, I'm going to go work on my tan very soon, get my skin glowing. You know, I've got nice bread. You know what? Today is a good day. I'm just happy. That's all I'm going to say about it. <laughs> okay, cool. And what about you, Wilnona? What indie books have you read in the last in the last year? Um, I don't. Know. I hope I'm not going to be too greedy, but I read two really great ones, and I just wanted to shout out those two authors. Well, it was T.R. Okay. Bahati. She did a lovely children's book that was kind of a sci-fi thing. It was a a meta a metaphor on changing your life even at a young age Excellent. learning to appreciate what you have and then like changing your life to uh, incorporate that and it was a hard complex thing to to put into a book for children to be able to understand so I love that because I was entertained and the characters were imaginative and her book was called butterfly world and for a grown-up read I loved Jenny yeah I don't even know how to say her last name I'm just <laughs> Yakovosi but she wrote a book up on the hill which was a general multi-generational family uh, from Washington DC from when like the president first came in and changed it from uh, like a swamp area all the way mm. up to the 1970s mm -hmm. so it had me entertained for ages and I can see the places because I live near Washington mm. DC Oh wow! Okay, nice. That's 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 good. You know, actually saying that, you know, um, on my website, you know, I created this feature where people who have um, children-friendly book because uh, books because I write children books as well or children's books, they can go and post your details. So you could you could you, I'm happy for you to post details about this children's book, which I forgot the name now. Please tell me the name again. Butterfly World by Tara Butterf Bahati. Yeah. Okay. So if you want, feel free to post a, a you know, a, a creator post about it. I'm sure you know she would be happy for the extra uh, publicity and exposure if you if you post it on my website. Um, so please, you know, people do go check it out um, and let the authors, if you're if you're able to leave a review for the authors, you know, then please, 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 please do. Okay. Right. So. We've talked about the importance of networking. We've talked about indie books. Ah, right. I, I knew we were forgetting something. Giveaways. You were going to do a giveaway, weren't you? Yes, I, I am. This is Wilnona. Yeah, I was going to do a giveaway of the new book coming out. So it would be a galley copy, a mm -hmm. pre release one of. <coughs> and I thought being a grown up was easy. Oh, uh, it's going to go on the same subject as Ken about the, uh, millennials' expectations in the real world. And then when they come kind of smack dab into reality, kind of run into that brick wall of reality, and then how to get over it and move on with life, and how to get your first relationship. So it goes from when you get out of, come out of college all the way up to walking down the aisle. Ooh. Now, quick question. Something that Ken said, and I know you can, what's Generation Z? Because I know I've, I've sort of gotten my head around millennials, right? But this is a new one for me. What's Generation Z? Well, Gen Z is, and I know I'll probably mess up the actual age range, uh, but Gen Z is the generation after millennials. I'd say it's probably like mid-teens, early 20s, something like that, probably like maybe 22, um, I, I maybe even down to 12. Again, I may get the ages wrong, but these but these are the folks that, that are in uh, junior high, high school, just entering into college that, that, that don't even know about that, that uh, metal reinforced brick wall that will no one talk about. 
<laughs> ah, okay, I see now that 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 that, that makes perfect sense. Um, so now, well, no, now your giveaway is about is the sequel to your first book, which was and I thought divorce was bad. Did I get the name correct? Yes. yes. Okay. It's so, a, we, yeah, go on. Uh, I feel bad because it's a sequel, but it's also like a prequel. This is what happens before you get divorced. Yes. Yes, yes. Okay. Now we're going to come to that in a second. So your your giveaway. Tell us about the giveaway details again, please. I think I, I we missed it. <clears throat> uh, I'm I'm just giving away a pre-ordered copy of. It'll be a galley copy of. And I thought grown-ups had it easy. Yeah. So if you would like to have a pre uh, pre-release copy, then feel free to fill out the information and see if you can't win one. And it'll be author signed by all the authors. Okay, so what uh, what information do you want them to? Are you gonna leave a comment on the YouTube video, or what do you want them to do? Leave a comment on my. What do you want them to do? Oh, could you leave a comment under the YouTube video to say that you would be interested in that copy, and then I will reply back if you want. Okay, perfect. So okay, that's perfect. Okay, so we're gonna talk about your first book in a second, but what about you, Ken? What is your giveaway if you're doing a giveaway? Well, I'll I'll do two quick giveaways. One um, to uh, the first three people that that put in B plus C plus S can get a copy of the formula for business success equals B plus C plus S signed by me. I will send them the the hard copy to the first three. Um, and anybody that's that's interested, I do have a supplement to that book called When Your Formula Doesn't Add Up. Um, similar to Wilnona, you can either call it a prequel or a sequel, but I found that that quick nine-page ebook um, helps to explain whether you read it before the actual hardcover B plus C plus S or read it afterwards. It tends to, to kind of fill in some of the gaps in, in your particular business. Hmm. But it sounds like a mathematical equation. You know, it, it it does. The irony is, and and you can, if you look up my book on Amazon, you can you can see the the first uh, few pages, obviously. But one of the first things that I say is is that it's not a mathematical <laughs> equation. That actually, it's I I always hated math as a kid, so I made sure to to not make it that way. But basically, it stands for. Brand plus, plus culture plus strategy, which simply is what's, as a business or even as a solopreneur, what's the image that we want to promote, what's the experience that we want to create, and how do we drive more of the right business to our business. Hmm, interesting. Okay, folks, well, you go, go, go check it out. Um, and he's, like you said, it is not a mathematical equation. It's not a mathematical textbook, even though he goes, because you know one of those, you know, complex mathematics and it, when your math teacher goes, okay, right, so X plus Y equals 10. Please find, and X is equal to uh, Y minus Z. What does X stand for? Or X to the power of 2 plus X to Y to the power of 3 equals Z. Find Y. Like, you're like, seriously. Yeah, my, I, 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 <laughs> yeah. In, in retrospect, I, I might have changed the title a little bit, but, uh, but for those that read the first few pages, they've, uh, they've told me that it's actually very easy to read. It's, it's, it's certainly not like a one of those uh, math problems that we had in, as kids, where if a train is going uh, <laughs> 70 miles per hour through through London. Um, and, and it's in a rainstorm, uh, how many muffins does Janice have? <laughs> and it's out of her. There's somebody out there doing that in their head right now. <laughs> I know, right? Okay. Now, Ken, if I'm not mistaken, you read, will, or you cast your eye through it, a little quick, briefly, Will Nona's first book. Yeah, yes. and I thought divorce was bad. And I know before we started, and that's the thing about this virtual cafe, we start chatting before we start recording. And you said, you know, you would be happy to do your give a meal segment of, you know, from a guy's perspective. So, what did you think about her book? And if you were going to write it from a guy's perspective, what would you do? Um, well, you know, having having been through divorce, um, yeah, I I thought that it was refreshing. Um, I I what I got out of the book 
was was that you know, the, the need to, to get back out there and to, in essence, kind of deal with some of your emotions. And I think that there's a misnomer that, that divorce is, is difficult on women and, and not necessarily difficult on men. And that's, that's not true. Even, even though, even though not to get into my personal story, even though I knew that the divorce was, was necessary, um, and it was, was very above board and, and, and not, uh, contentious, uh, there's a lot of emotions there, you know, whether it's been a couple years or, or, or decades, uh, there's a lot of emotions that you have to deal with. Um, and well, Nona's book, you know, really hits on that. Um, yeah, I don't know, even from a male perspective, if I would necessarily change a thing, um, you know, simply because, yeah, I, th I think we get into, um, uh, we, we get into this, this, uh, wrong mindset that you know men think a certain way and women think a certain way you know, I think it all it all comes down to personality profile you know case in point I, I've known some men that that think traditionally more like women and some and some women that think a little bit more like men that that just brush off divorce I've seen that myself so I don't know if I would really change a thing I, I think that it's it's if it's it's either going to speak to you um, as it did to me or or it isn't if that makes sense mm, 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 mm. so okay so then I take it then you think that do you think that okay so let's ask not to put words into your own mouth you've got the author sitting next to you virtual cafe what would you say to her? Did she deliver? Was it a good book? Would you recommend it? What did you like? Did you like everything when when you were reading it? Did you, you did it actually speak to you? To use your own words. Yeah, yeah, it it did speak to me. Um, yeah, one of one of the things, and I I do have it up here. And I'm trying to look for the particular page where where it talks about um, and well, Nona, maybe you can help me out of of basically not being a recluse. Um, I think that you know you you get you get to a certain stage, either in a, a breakup or a divorce, where you're sitting there and you're you're think you're constantly thinking about these these issues or these the problem or or the the bad thing that happened, um, or what could have I what could I have done differently, um, and kind of tying into our theme today of, of networking. Sometimes you just need to get out there. You need to 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 see some new people or go and see some old friends. And and that in and of itself kind of gets you gets gets you through that that unfortunate event, if that makes sense. Hmm. 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 Okay. No, that's 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 definitely quite interesting. I mean, I I've never been married, so I've never been divorced. Um, so I couldn't tell you what you know. Feel like, <laughs> but I can only sort of imagine, you know, that when you go, you've gone through a difficult time. Depending on the circumstances, you might just go, woohoo! Thank goodness, I am free. Or are you gonna go being a recluse? You're gonna just think, oh my god, I just need to lock myself away. I can't imagine how you know this has gone bad, and you just want to you know to just sort of hide yourself uh, <clears throat> away. So it's quite it's quite interesting to you know to hear both sides of the stories, like you know from a guy's perspective, um, what you what you think about the book. Now, well, what do you think, Wilnona? About Ken's book or about his uh, observations about my book? About his observations in your book. First of all, I wanted to say thank you so much for giving me a real guy's perspective of it. Um, that was kind of cool. I've I've heard quite a few times of um, guys. Uh, we actually have workshops with just guys. And they read the book and then they tell me what they thought. And um, most of them say that it was cool. It helped them understand, like, some of the women that they're dating now. But mm -hmm, yeah. um, just to hear a guy who actually went through divorce be like, yeah, I could read it. Was it an easy read for you, though? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I, I got through, I'd say, at least a few chapters in probably half an hour. Um, I thought it was pretty easy. Yeah, like, uh, I think Goodreads has it down as like a two-hour read. But yeah, I think I, I like that a lot. Thank you so much, Ken, for even taking the time to read it. And uh, My pleasure. To respond to, to respond to you, Sagola, you don't have to be married for this book. It's for people who are the ages of 26 to 52. I have the 26-year-old has never been married, and she just wrote about like going out there and trying to find the right person to share your life with the 52 mm. year old has been married for 30 plus years she, she wrote about like being married and then when you come to that point where you recognize the kids are gone schooling's over and it's just you and your husband and you gotta find yourself in a relationship again find yourself in that marriage again and then we have a newlywed who's been married for five years now but um she's been married for five years now and she wrote about like what happens when you 
first get married and like learning it's not that happily ever after so it's not about divorce but I had last say on the title so therefore I wrote it about divorce <laughs> <laughs> all right okay perfect oh perfect thanks thanks for that hmm I feel like I'm forgetting something oh yes did you um... how did they sell for kids sorry oh nothing <laughs> So, did you have a quick look at uh, Ken's book? Yes, I did. I'm still looking at it right now. I was like, okay, I want to make sure I got all my thoughts correct. First of all, I want to say, um, when I read business books, when I saw it, I was like, oh, great. It's like being in class because I'm in school right now to be a business administrator, and I currently am a COO. So, um, I was sitting here going, that's going to be another one of those wonderful things, but it's not. It's very entertaining. I like I like where you started off with real businesses. First of all, you used the concept of Starbucks. I loved that because that's the brand that I love. I personally love, and I've always been a huge person to study them. And then what it meant to you, like recognizing that it's just about being the center of, it was about being the center of your social activity. It wasn't just like picking up a coffee. I'm sitting at a McDonald's, so um, it wasn't just like, you know, going through a drive through It's about like, you know, having a culture, a social activity, and that kind of drove the brand. And also, I think it was interesting because at this time when we were talking about Generation Y, Generation Z, and the millennials, they know how to make a brand. And the more I look, talk to them, the more they're like, I want my brand to do this. I want my brand to do that. So they see themselves as a brand. So this book is great because it's useful for them to keep putting themselves forward as a brand. And the iceberg illustration. Thank you for making it a picture and not just something I had to visualize for the love of God, thanks. Um, also, the, I've never thought about the fact that the history of the company is going to have a huge amount to do with the brand, which is kind of dumb that I had never thought of it. But seeing it as like the large part of the iceberg, knowing that the biggest part of the iceberg is what you see underneath. And then figuring out that the history that is going to be probably the most effective thing that's going to make someone make a, make a purchase or not make a purchase. Uh, the way you did that blew my mind. I'm rethinking every business I have right now. I'm actually thinking the business I'm working for right now after reading this book. Hmm, interesting. Why? Why is that? Well, I don't think we have... I don't think uh, I have an event planning business, and we have a lovely reputation, but we don't necessarily have the best brand. I have a bakery business, and I know we don't have a good brand, but I was like, well, the food looks great, so no one's going to care. <laughs> right, but we need a good brand. I mean, the food tastes good, too, but, I mean, and it looks great in the pictures. But we need a better brand. We need to think about the, each person's experience. We need to think about possibly making it a culture sort of thing because it's a southern sort of, it's a soul food thing, a southern soul food thing. Well, let's, like, try to tailor it towards southern soul food using the, uh, first of all, using the biggest part of that iceberg, which was the bottom. And then we can think about the culture part, which Starbucks, you said, uh, which you had said, like, how Starbucks is a cultural thing. So, um, I'm sorry, Ken. I'm probably murdering your words and your work. I sincerely apologize. <laughs> nah, you know, no, no, you, 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 no apologies necessary. If, if you know, I'm sitting here blushing because that that is is such a great endorsement on on so many levels. It's it's kind of funny because I literally uh, a week or two ago I did a. Uh, a session for wedding and event planners, and and some of them you know, actually work with bakeries. I think there was even one bakery there, and we we talked about you know how the the product is is important, but how everybody is as you just said it needs an experience. You know whether whether it's a wedding cake or or a breakfast sandwich or in in the case of events a a, a photographer that's that's going to be on time and, and give a, a certain uh, level of professionalism um, and also you know finding your niche if if you 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 mentioned event planning um, you know, are you a high end event planner are you somebody that's going to be low cost you know all of those are fine but you have to know exactly you know what what brand you're you're going to be promoting out there and the the, the most important thing that, that you said that, that really really hit my heart was that it was entertaining um, you know it, it, I've been doing this for about 15 years in one way shape or form and I'd say for about at least 12 my focus was always as, as you put it well known well I have to teach I have to educate I have to make sure that I get all the points out there and, and starting with the book, and it, it changed my presentations as well. My my first 
inclination is, you know, I'm going to entertain these folks. We're going to have fun. We're, we're going to have a few jokes. And, and through that process, we're going to learn a few things. And I found that, that people learn a lot more because we're, we're just having fun and, and, and making things as simple as we can. Ken, if you could give me tips on how to do that later, too, that'd be great. It would be my pleasure. <laughs> Yay! Oh, 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 let me share some news with people, right? So, <clears throat> this is me, this is my, you know, my, my five minutes or my five seconds of fame, right? So, I woke up this morning, someone sent me an email, and I went on iTunes to just check something out, and... In the UK store, UK iTunes store, and I couldn't tell you what it's, it's currently in the other iTunes store, but the Shagilala Salami show is the top three podcast show in literature on iTunes. <laughs> Woo! Good job. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you very Congratulations. much. Congratulations. <laughs> Thank you. I just remembered. I was like, yes. <laughs> so, well, let's see. Let me think, see if I can come up with a tagline. The Shagulala Salami Shu, connecting authors and being a. Uh, come on, with someone come up. Can't come up with a nice tagline for me. <laughs> <laughs> connecting authors throughout the world. How's that? Perfect, perfect. So, the Shagulala Salami Shu, connecting authors throughout the world. Yeah! <laughs> See, even the little human happy about that. <laughs> I was going to say, you got a fan of it right there. <laughs> yeah! <laughs> <laughs> so I was like, wow, you know when you just thought of something and you don't really know where, you know, it's going to head up, and then you see something like that and you just think, wow, you know, and then you know, if, if nothing else, I've connected the two of you today, and I think that's a good thing, right? Absolutely. Great. Yes. So, yes. Okay. Wow. And then I seem to have so much fun on the show because we've been on for an hour, and every single time I always say to myself, I will try to make it just half an hour, but every single time, it, time just flies away with me. Okay, so I'm going to have to ask both of you, have you listened to one show, any, at least one episode, from the beginning to the end? Yes. Okay. I listened to quite a few from the beginning to the end. Yay! I like that, because sometimes I worry that, you know, the show gets, because I'm, we're having fun, and the show then takes, you know, goes over an hour, um, I didn't think, will the other people then not want to listen to it because they might think, oh my god, it's too long. Because when you do research, or when I've done research, or when I've read them, you know, they say like on YouTube, videos should be like 15 seconds or less than two minutes or less than five minutes. Um, and so anything else, it just makes people not be interested. And then so there's some part of me, and though while I know we're having fun and we're talking about, you know, useful and interesting stuff, I didn't have this thing in the back of my mind, like, oh, is it going too long? Would anyone actually want to listen to it all the way through? But, you know, just the fact that you guys have actually listened to all, you know, some episodes all the way through, that's all, that, that just makes me feel happy. Thank you very much. Well, I think it speaks to the experience that you provide. Uh, there, it's about engagement. In, in fact, I, I saw something that says that that length isn't necessarily the most important anymore. Because there are some YouTube videos that are 90 seconds that people turn off in 10 seconds because they're not engaging, and and other videos and podcasts that go as long as 90 minutes that people go to the very end because they it, it resonates with them. So congratulations. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. But I'm actually quite pleased today. So today, just to summarize a third time, we've talked about the importance of networking. So if you do fiction, you know, your networking is kind of like, uh, this is more like a continuation of last week's episode, you know, where the takeaway from last week's episode is that word of mouth is very, very important. And so moving on from that, and one way to increase your, your base is to network selectively with selective people because you don't want to just go willy-nilly and just go for everyone. Um, you've got to be a bit selective and go for, you know, to network in events where you can actually collaborate with people who would be beneficial to you. So you don't want to go to a networking event where there are like 20 insurance salespeople unless you want 20 different insurance salespeople to call you and try to sell you insurance. So you've got to be selective about where you go, and especially useful would be for a chamber of commerce for nonfiction writers. For fiction writers, one of the best ways, one amongst loads of different, you know, venues to go for would be 
you know, places that do open mic events because people there are already um, interested in artsy stuff and books and poetry and things like that. But then also you need to bear in mind that when you're doing your reading, you need to put your package in. Okay, so don't go and read in a monotonous. Oh, hello, my name is Shakila Lassalami. Oh, hello, my name is Ken Bater. You know, you need to go. Hello there, my name is Shakila Lassalami. Okay, and you are on the Shakila Lassalami show. Okay. So you've got to go and put your best foot forward, you know, make it exciting, make it entertaining. Because something that I read somewhere is that people do not remember what you say, but they remember how you make them feel. So when you're going there and you're connecting with people, make sure that they remember you. Do something that's amazing. Okay? And I'm not sure why I'm saying okay today. I think it's all the sunshine. It's, 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 just, it's, just, it's just doing something. Um, but I think that's it, that's it, my lovely guest, I'm sorry, you know, the little human, we didn't get your drinks together, but never mind, I really need to do something, how can we, se I think we need to find a way to do, like, a. I see a lot of, uh, what's it called now, virtual reality glasses, we need to be able to do something where we can record the show as a virtual reality thing, what do you think? Then I can actually get you guys your drinks. I'll see, oh, if, if, if you could do that with a screwdriver, that would be perfect. <laughs> Ken, you stole the words out of my mouth. <laughs> okay, well, we need to find some, you know, some, um, what's the word, someone who is very tech savvy to find a way to make the show a virtual reality one, where we just put on our glasses and we can record in the virtual reality and we can actually sit down in a nice sunny beach somewhere having our screwdrivers. <laughs> yes. yes, okay. No, that's perfect. So, okay, well, I know that people, they, they, they listen to the show and they know how to connect with me via my website, shagilolasalami.co.uk, or I'm, and I'm also on Twitter, which is at Iayetunde1. So if they wanted to connect with you guys, how did they do that? So if we start with Will Nona. Well, if you would like to connect with us, you can check us out at www.endwethought.com. It has all the backstories as well as our current podcast. You can also find us on Blog Talk Radio at backslash. And I thought you will be able to catch us on television from June the 13th through the 19th on Every Woman Way. That's for the people in the U.S. If you can't catch it on the actual station, you can catch it on YouTube. And for those listening and London. I will be on London on the Chrissy B show on November the 10th. So catch me on Sky Channel 203. It'll be at 10 o'clock. And I believe that's it. What show will you be on in, in London? Chrissy B. Oh, okay. Uh, right. What station is that on? Sky Channel 203. That's the number. Uh, what's the name of the station? I have not the faintest idea. <laughs> <laughs> when you get television, you're like, all right, the producers tell you what to do, and you be like, I'll be there. Mm, mm, mm. It's just because not everybody has Skype, um, but then some people might be on a different network, and then the channel might be different. But I, I will go and I will go I will go and I will go and check. Okay, perfect. And how about you, Ken? Well, there's a few ways to connect with me. Um, the Bader Training and Consulting website is simply www.btcinc.net. Again, that's btcinc.net. Um, and there's some articles on there. There's links to the books. There's uh, some videos and so forth that, that you can uh, avail yourself to. Um, the two social media platforms that I'm probably the most active on is number one, LinkedIn. Um, that's just simply linkedin.com slash I-N slash Ken Bader. That's Ken, K-E-N. B A T O R, uh, and I actually uh, do my blog through LinkedIn Pulse, um, and I'm on week 11 of the uh, 52 weeks of Better Business Strategy series. So that's obviously free, and, and listeners can avail themselves of that. And on Twitter, because I know a lot of people like to connect on Twitter, and I welcome that as well. Uh, I'm simply at K Bader, K B A T O R. 
Um, both of you are a little bit more advanced than I am. I am literally working with two consultants. Yes, a consultant working with consultants <laughs> on putting on uh, on putting together a uh, um, a uh, a video show. Uh, interviews and such, which will probably be on the Blab platform. And uh, as soon as that comes out, I will make sure that I uh, I send that out to everybody as well. Perfect, perfect. Thank you very much. Um, it's been a pleasure having you both on the on the show. Um, <clears throat> We got distracted, um, and your tea and croissant was not delivered by the little human, and I'm going to have a word with her mummy. <laughs> so thank you for sparing the time to come on the virtual cafe. Um, and to everyone else in the, in listening to the show, thank you so much for stopping by. Um, it's been a pleasure having you on the top three podcast show on iTunes. <laughs> Now, if you like the show, please spread the word um, with your friends and family and everyone you know and spam everyone and tell them they need to come check out the show. I would really appreciate it. Um, if you would like to be a guest on the next show or if you would just like to be in the audience, then please send me a message via my website. Um, if you would like to sponsor the show, please say yes. I would appreciate it. You can also contact me via my website. Uh, and that's it. And I will see you next week on the Shaggy Lola Salami Show. Bye now. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Bye. Thank you. Thanks. Bye.